Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zero Davila and welcome back to Save Our System IT. Today I'll continue with the third video for the BusyBox series. The CH mod command is used to change the file mode bits. The format of a symbolic mode is UGOA, then minus plus or equals, and then the permissions. Where permissions are either zero or more letters from the set uh, RWX capital XST, or a single letter from the set UGO. Multiple symbolic modes can be given, separated by commas. A combination of the letters UGOA controls which users' access to the file will be changed. The user who owns it is U, other users in the files' group is G, other users not in the files' group O, or all users A. If none of these are given, the effect is as if A were given, but bits that are set in the U mask are not affected. The operator plus causes the selected file mode bits to be added to the existing file mode bits of each file. Minus causes them to be removed, and equal causes them to be added and causes unmentioned bits to be removed except that the directory's unmentioned set user and group ID bits are not affected. The letters RWX capital XST select file mode bits for the affected users. Read is R, uh, write is W, execute or search for directory is X, execute and search only if the file is a directory or already has execute permission for some user is capital X. Set user or group ID on execution is S, and the restricted deletion flag or sticky bit is T. Instead of one or more of these letters, you can specify exactly one or, uh, of the letters UGO. The permissions granted to the user who owns the file is U, the permission granted to the users who are members of the files group is G, and the permission granted to the users that are in either of the two preceding categories is O. Uh, numeric mode is from 1 to 4 octal digits, 0 to 7. Derived by adding up the bits with values 4, 2, and 1. Omitted digits are assumed to be leading zeros. The first digit selects the set user ID 4 uh, and set group ID 2 and restricted uh, deletion or sticky 1 attributes. The second digit selects permissions for the user who owns the file. Read is 4, write is 2, and execute is 1. The third selects permissions for other users in the file's group with the same values and the fourth for some other users who are not in the files group with the same values. CHMode never changes the permissions of symbolic links. The CHMode system call cannot change their permissions, but this is not a problem since the permissions of symbolic links are never used. However, for each symbolic link listed on the command line, CHMode changes the permissions of the pointed to file. In contrast, CHMode ignores symbolic links encountered during recursive directory traversals. The chmod command is used to change the file owner in the group. If only an owner, a username or numeric user ID is given, that user is made the owner of each given file, and the file's group is not changed. If the owner is followed by a colon in a group name or numeric group ID with no spaces between them, the group ownership of the file is changed as well. If a colon but no group name follows the username, that user is made the owner of the file, and the group of the file is uh, changed to that user's login group. If the column and the group are given but the owner is omitted, only the group of the file is changed. In this case, chon performs the same function as change group. If only a column is given or if the entire operand is empty, neither the owner nor the group is changed. The chroot utility will run a command or interactive shell with a special root directory. A program that is run in such a modified environment cannot name, and therefore normally cannot access, files outside the designated directory tree. The modified environment is called the chroot jail. The chvt command is used to change the foreground virtual terminal. The command change virtual terminal n makes slash dev slash tty n the foreground terminal. The corresponding screen is created if it did not exist yet. To get rid of unused virtual terminals, use dialog virtual terminal. The key combination uh, control left alt fn with n in the range of 1 to 12 usually has a similar effect. Clear clears your screen if this is possible, including its scroll black buffer if the extended E3 capability is defined. Clear looks in the environment for the terminal type and then in the term info database to determine how to clear the screen. Clear ignores any command line parameters that may be present. CMP is actually the abbreviation of compare and that's exactly what it does. It compares two files byte by byte. You can actually use skip1 and skip2 after file1 and file2 to specify the number of bytes to skip at the beginning of each file. It's zero by default. CMP reports the differences between two files character by character instead of line by line. As a result, it's more useful than diff for comparing binary files. 
For text files, CNP is useful mainly when you want to know only whether two files are identical. For lines that are identical, CMP produces no output. When the files differ, by default, CMP outputs the byte offset and line number where the first difference occurs. You can use the hyphen S option to suppress that information, so that CMP produces no output and reports whether the files differ uh, using only its exit status. Unlike diff, CMP cannot compare directories, it can only compare two files. The cp command is used to copy files and folders, it's uh, one of the core Linux commands. It's pretty easy to use, the first argument would be the file or folder you want to copy, then the second argument would be the new name of the file, or the location where the copy should be placed if it's a directory. The cp command can also be used to create hard links between files, but we will go on about hard links and symlinks further down the series. cpio is a tool for creating and extracting archives, or copying files from one place to another. It handles a number of CPIO formats as well as reading and writing tar files. The following archive formats are supported. Binary, Old ASCII, New ASCII, CRC, HPUX Binary, HPUX Old ASCII, Old TAR and POSIX1 TAR. The TAR format is provided for compatibility with the TAR program. By default, CPIO creates binary format archives for compatibility with older CPIO programs. When extracting from archives, CPIO automatically recognizes which kind of archive it is reading and can read archives created on machines with a different byte order. In copy out mode, CPIO copies files into an archive. It reads a list of file names, one per line, on the standard input and writes an archive onto the standard output. A typical way to generate the list of file names is with a find command. You should give uh, find the hyphen depth option to minimize problems with permissions on directories that are unreadable. In copy in mode, CPIO copies files out of an archive or lists the uh, archive's content. It reads the archive from the standard input. Any non option command line arguments are shell globbing patterns. Only files in the archives whose name match one or more of those patterns are copied from the archive. Unlike in the shell, an initial dot in a file name does not match a wildcard at the start of a pattern, and a slash in a file name can match wildcards. If no patterns are given, all files are extracted. In copy pass mode, CPIO copies files from one directory tree to another, combining the copy out and copy in steps without actually using an archive. It reads the list of files to copy from the standard input. The directory into which it will copy them is given as a non option argument. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.